Hello everyone! Welcome to another tutorial from the team here at BlenderTech.com. That's Blender T E K dot com. I'm gonna save you my usual long intro and get right into this. I'm gonna show you a few quick tips and tricks that even the pros miss out on or forget or haven't even realized have been added in recent or new versions. So let's get started quickly. We'll be moving into orthographic view so that we have no perspective distortion. So just simply hit numpad 5 to go into orthographic mode. The first tip I'm going to show you is the repeat command. This is not known by many people. I don't know when it was added, but it's just a simple shift R. And what this will do is it will repeat the last thing you did. So I'm going to create some sort of star shape with a lot of vertices and show you how this works. All right, so I've created this weird little shape here. And let's say I wanted to merge three vertices. I'd right click on three vertices and then I'd go Alt M for the merge menu and I'd let's say I want to merge them at the center. Boom. It merges them at the center. Now I could go and do this again, but instead let's select three vertices and then if we hit Shift R, bam, it repeats the command. We can select any number of vertices and hit shift R and it repeats it. So the repeat command again that shift and R can be used to almost anything. Let me show you for example let's take this square here and extrude it to there if we select this square here and then use our repeat shift R BAM anywhere shift R BAM same height and everything so that's very very useful for doing things quickly and efficiently this will increase your workflow hugely so that's all there is to the repeat command again you can do this to pretty much any command if we scale repeat it all scales there you have it so next up is a user preferences tip and I'm gonna go into more details in my video about setting up all the user preferences but if you go into your user preferences from the file menu or use the shortcut key control alt u to open up your user preferences under editing by stock it's aligned to world so let's see what that does what that does is that when you create a plane or any other mesh so let's hit control and add a plane it'll be flat it'll be you know aligned to our x and y axis so it'll be flat basically against what you would consider the ground the grid space the world and no matter where we create it or from what angle and what view if we create a, another one say it'll always be flat you can do this with cubes you can do this with circles, do this with spheres, so they're all aligned flat to the world. Now this is a preference and some people may or may not like this, but I think this makes sense to me. If we go back into user preferences and change align to the view, now when we create a new object, it will be aligned to our view. So if we add a new cube, Notice how it's rotated? That's because it's aligned to this specific view. See how it's rotated like that? Now I find this useful because say I'm in side view. If I want to create a cube right perfectly there, I just hit cube and it's aligned flat to this right orthographic view perfectly. And so I just find that this makes more sense to me. Again, it's it's more up to your preference, hence user preferences, but I think this makes more sense. Let me explain why I think this makes more sense. The stock way aligned to world, again this is factory settings, if you created a mesh plane, that's great, it's flat, that's like your floor, but if you wanted to make it into say a wall, you would have to rotate along the X 90 degrees, so that's one step extra step that you'd have to do to make it into a wall essentially however if we were to change it to what I like and suggest which is aligned to view if we go into front view and add a plane now we have our wall without rotating at all and if we go into right view and add a plane 
now you have your your other wall in the other direction without doing any sort of rotating this is where I find it very useful so it saves you time in some parts and makes you waste time in others so again it's up to you but I find this makes sense another quick user preference option that is very useful that many people don't notice and again I'm gonna go into more detail in my video about user preferences is under interface we have the zoom to mouse position now by default this is deselected so let's see what it looks like by default so default when you zoom in and out it zooms in and out along one area no matter where your mouse is if my mouse is over here it zooms in to the middle however if we change it again to the way I like it and enable zoom to most position this way wherever your mouse cursor is is where you zoom into so see now we can easily zoom into any part of the 3d world that we want I find this saves a ton of time and I highly recommend this option another one that I just learned is let's say we had a massive scene like let's say we'll go back and zoom out a ton and we'll add a mesh cube I'll we'll just move it way off and then we're gonna duplicate it and move it over here now if you had a huge scene finding these is hard and you can get lost way out here you're like where the heck are my cubes you can just barely see them they're dots however if you hit numpad period or numpad dot it'll instantly zoom you into the object you have selected so if we select cube 001 okay I have no idea where it is but hit numpad dot and boom it's right there we can do this with any object and it'll bring us right to our object see right back to our original object and then we go numpad period nope it'll work in edit mode too so no matter what object you have selected numpad period will zoom into it in it any mode. Another helpful tip I just learned. Here's another one that I just learned about edit mode and it has to do with scaling. Let's say we had a mesh cylinder like this. Now normally when you go to scale if you needed to scale it in one direction or sorry if you needed to scale it in two directions you would first say scale it in the X direction to make it fatter and then in the y direction oops scale and then in the y direction to make it longer however by using a special command you can lock in and do them both at once so if we hit s to scale and then shift z just once we're now locked against you can see in the bottom locking global z and it will now do the same thing without affecting the height of the object. The object is still the same height. You can sh press C once more, sorry, Shift Z twice to lock against Global Z. And this will allow you to change it from global to local. Uh, Z was a bad explanation. So you can now lock in to a certain axis so let's say we would go scale now press shift and then Y and now it'll lock against global Y so if we scale it as you can see it's only affecting the Z and X direction and not the Y so that's very useful that way you can scale two axes at once next I'm going to show you a modifier trick so let's say we wanted to create some sort of a cup so we have our circle selected here and then we're gonna extrude it up scale it out extrude it up scale it out and then extrude it straight up and at the very top we're gonna extrude it just a little bit to give it a lip and scale it in and then we're gonna select the center vertice and delete so we have a basic cup here but as you can see everything's paper thin and cups are not paper thin at least I hope not otherwise they would break very very easily so to change this you could model yourself by extruding each face individually the amount that you want but there's an easier way 
go to the wrench icon which is the modifiers panel and add a modifier we're gonna add the solidify modifier so what this does knock up the amount a little bit is it gives your object depth and makes it more solid so I'm gonna crank it up so that we can really see as you can see it really makes things solid so now you can see that it's a very thick object so this is great for creating things like glass objects and just simply creating thickness to your objects quickly without having to extrude everything manually especially organic shapes anything with that's curved and anything with a lot of geometry I went over the top here this would be an extremely thick glass but you get the idea and then you can always hit apply and you now have a full mesh with everything that's the thickness that you selected in the modifier so I think I'm gonna leave it off there thanks for watching from the team here at blendertech.com again that's blender t e k dot com if you enjoyed this video and learned something please like it and don't forget to subscribe for more blender unity 3d and coding videos we try to add between one to ten a day if you dislike this video for some reason please leave a comment or email the team at info at blendertech dot com as to what you did not like and what we can improve on we will always take your advice into consideration and make immediate changes to all our videos we also take requests for tutorials so let us know what you want or want more content of see you next time and remember create your way